Democracy is not self-government. Democracy is the idea that my neighbor gets to decide who gets to represent me. I think the next great abolitionist movement will be the abolition of the state itself. You are listening to And If Love Remains, a unique show spotlighting people, ideas, science, culture, and art. Your host, Mike Lovett. Mike Lovett. Thank you, Rachel. I am your friendly neighborhood host in that podcast in the sky, Mike Lovett. And the podcast is called And If Love Remains, of course. And I'm really happy to talk to you today. We're going to talk about something, a kind of a big subject I'm not going to spend a ton of time on because you could be, we could talk for hours on it and hopefully we'll do more on this. But I, what I want to do is uh, um, have a quick exploration of God, free will, natural law, um, and history. And, and I want to emphasize a little bit that, that today I want to delve into the idea that God allows people to exercise their free will and work together in a voluntary manner. So let's dive in. Um, first of all, we need to define free will and natural law. Free will is the ability to, to choose between different possible courses of action without coercion. And natural law refers to a set of moral principles believed to be inherent in human nature, discoverable through reason and backed by a higher divine authority. So, um, let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about, um, and, and there's many theologians and th- great thinkers that, 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 uh, make the claim that, um, that I believe that natural law and, um, that law itself can be found in two different places, nature and scripture and revelation. So we're going to start with some revelation and then we'll move into nature and and the human condition. So um, first of all, we can start with the Garden of Eden where God grants Adam and Eve free will, allowing them to choose between obedience and disobedience with consequences for their actions and their natural consequences. Um, I think that's really important to state in this world that we live in. You know, whenever we're given a commandment or given a set of principles, um, these, there are natural consequences that 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 happen. It's it's not like God throws a you know a, a lightning bolt in our direction or something. It's just it. There's you pull you pull the one one you pull the string and the other end of the string follows. Okay. Um, another example is the Ten Commandments, and that represents a moral code based on natural law principles given to God to guide human behavior. I've said this many times that the Ten Commandments is not an instruction manual to get us to heaven. It is a way to help us live in this life and be happy. Um, to move on to the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus elaborated on, on natural law principles, emphasizing love, forgiveness, humility. You might think, well, how are those natural law principles? Well, because they work in our daily lives, it's how the human condition um, it, it, it responds, you know, if we're able to forgive, there's a natural response, um, of love and we can move on and, and do the things that we need to do. I'm um, in the book of Mormon. Um, King Mosiah established a system of judges chosen by the voice of the people, emphasizing personal responsibility and the importance of moral character and governance. And I think that's a really important thing. Is, is this idea of virtue, moral character. That if, if there's one thing that's lacking in our society, it's personal virtue, and nothing gets fixed without personal virtue. So, dare I say, let's repent. Let's change our ways, man. This is easy stuff. Let's just uh, do better. Um, and the final example from Revelation is um, also in the Book of Mormon. It's the uh, when I've talked about this in an earlier episode, but second Nephi chapter two is just amazing and well thought. Lehi teaches that God gave humans the gift of agency, the ability to choose between good and evil and is an essential part of their moral experience. Again, I've come to believe that God is way more interested in us choosing good than actually doing good. 
And that may seem obvious to some, it may seem strange to others, but I really think that that's true. I think that he's much more interested in us having the choice and choosing good and and having the opportunity to choose evil or choose the bad um, as opposed to him us actually doing the good and 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 what does that mean i mean i think the implications are deep on that um the implications are that we're all going to make mistakes the implications is, is that we're all going to fall short and the implications are that there's a way for all of us to return otherwise otherwise there's no um point so okay so let's talk a little bit about um, history and how free will, natural law, and voluntary cooperation has, has shaped history. And one aspect we can talk about is the early Christians who chose to live voluntar- uh, voluntarily. Um, in some cases, they were pooling their resources. They cared for one another. We know that. Um, and and that was because they, they, they had this fundamental... Um, they were a people. Um, there wasn't a worry of, and you see this also in in, in uh, Mormon history with uh, like the pioneers. Um, you know, they had, everybody had their own stuff and they had their own stewardship and they had their own things that they had to take care of. But at the same time, there was this communal spirit of if if uh, if somebody was sick or if somebody was unable to to do it then people would chip in to help and make sure that that nobody was left behind um in this kind of a, of covenantal relationship it is the opposite of the weak uh the chain is only as strong as the weak link the 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 chain is only as strong as the strongest weak link in this case and the strongest link is Christ um, okay, also from history, the Magna Carta and this historical go- document limited the power of the English monarch and established the principle that even the king was subject to the rule of law, reflecting natural law concepts. And uh, um, it's pretty sad that you had to write that down. And we can talk about that in a future episode. But the fact that that we had to spell out that the king um, did not have a uh, fundamental right to do whatever he wanted is absolutely, um, you know, it's pretty sad. Okay. Next the enlightenment. We have um, people like John Locke, Thomas Paine promoted the idea of natural law and emphasizes that people have inherent rights to life, liberty, and property. Amen. We know this. um, And it's, and we need to reemphasize this every single day. That, of course, leads to the American Revolution, the founding principles of the United States. Um, the Declaration of Independence were heavily influenced by natural law and the belief that individual rights and self-governance. Absolutely, that a, a king had no right to rule over a free, per, a free people and would be kicked out. Um, and then uh, another example is the abolitionist movement the abolition of slavery in various countries, including the United States, um, by the recognition of the natural rights of all human beings, regardless of race. And I want to add this. The next great abolitionist movement is the abolition of the state. The recognition that the state itself, as an entity, as a concept, is evil and is... um, antithetical to human ha- happiness. So I think the next great abolitionist movement will be the abolition of the state itself. Amen and amen. May it be. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's talk about some, some complicating factors. And, and the first one I want to talk about is democracy. Democracy is not free will. Democracy is not self-government. Democracy is the idea that my neighbor gets to decide who gets to represent me. It is the opposite of, and I, this is going to go against a lot, especially, you know, my, my friends who are um, pro-constitutionalist, 
that that believe in that that we live in a, in a government that is self governing. It is not. It's become more and more evident. It is not. It's become clearer and clearer that the um, that the people that enforce the law um, are not protecting our rights, but instead are protecting the um, powers of the government. And and every person working in um, the state apparatus is 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 um, it, it it's going against the the um, the will of the people. And 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 this is the well. I, I shouldn't say that. Let me say it a different way. I think that it's the will of the people that need to stand up and rise up against it. But you know, we probably won't. Um. Some alternative economic models. Now, why are, why is economics important when it, when it comes to free will? Well, because everything that um, it's my person and my work that I have autonomy over, and everything kind of reflects upon that. And so, for example, um, if if I do a job for somebody and I'm getting paid a certain amount of money, but then because of inflation, that amount of money is worth less then that money has just been stolen. My work has been stolen. And I don't mean by the person because that was an agreed upon amount, but the problem is, is that it's been stolen by the government. It's been stolen by the, by the entities that, that control the money. So it's important to have an economic model where we control the money. Not the state, not the um, not Congress, not the Fed. Um, that we can actually have autonomy over the mo- our own money supply, um, whether that's gold or Bitcoin. I don't know the exact answer, but there has got to be alternative economic models that separate us from the state. Um, and then, and then, of course, balancing security and freedom, and and. And I'm a big believer that if you're, um, as Mike Rose said, uh, safety third, um, you know, if, if your main goal is safety and security, then you're going to be run by a tyrant every time. We've got to have faith. And the first part of that faith is we've got to have faith that God will protect us. We just have to have, like we have, like the farmer has to have faith that, um, that the rain will come and crops will rise. We have to have faith that we don't need a standing army to protect us from a country that are, that is literally thousands of miles away. Um, all right. So there's a lot more that could be said. I think I've said enough for now, um, but I, it's, um, I'm really happy to be able to have a kind of a form to talk about this stuff. I would ask everybody to um, explore this idea of God, free will, natural law. Subscribe, tune in. Um, most of all, keep seeking the truth. Never stop asking questions about the world around you and the God that made it. You're listening to And If Love Remains. You are listening to And If Love Remains. The first of 23 installments requested by Dr. Levitt trying to be in compliance here because we're taking him and that whole organization down.